Hi, in this video I would like to talk about uh, one of our tools called the KND Log Cleaner. Uh, data logs come in all shapes and forms. They have different sources. They can come from uh, WTP, Deckman, Expedition, Adrena, uh, lots of different sources. And sometimes they need to be formatted a little bit bec before they can be used in our other tools like Race Replay. One of the best way to do that is to pre-process it through the KND Log Cleaner. So start out by running the log cleaner and then load your log. We are going to be working for this demo on a, an expedition log. It's always recommended that you have a look at your log itself using Notepad before that, just to have an idea of how it's formatted. Let's do that now. Here is a sample of my uh, expedition log. Uh, as you can see, I also have samples for Bravo log and Deckman type log. I'll get back to that. Right now, we are using this, this specific log, which is a typical expedition log. Once you have loaded the log, it will have started filling in, in this first page, uh, all the fields that it found. Initially, you don't need to tell it anything other than um, possibly what is the field separator, although this should have been detected automatically. If I go back to the log, you can quickly see that uh, comma is the field separator. Click on next. It now takes you to a page telling you to specify where do the labels start. So one quick way to do that is saying, oh, look, it's in the first row. So I can click anywhere on the first row with my mouse and say selected. This is where the label starts. Now, second thing on the second row and after that, uh, the data starts, except that as you can see on the first row, latitude and longitude are still on zero. Probably the GPS has not fully booted up. And then after that, it takes a while before the data actually starts getting filled up. So I can tell the log cleaner to not start processing lines until there's actually full data. So in, that, in this case, it starts on this line. And then I can say the values start and click on selected. Value starts on row 15. Click next. I'm now asked, um, how is my timestamp specified in my log? So in the case of an expedition log, the timestamp is in a column with label UTC. So we can tell it the timestamp column. So I can click on this UTC column and say selected, it's number two. And then I need to specify which format it's in. In our case, it's a expedition UTC format, which is a specific, the, the specific um, time format for expedition. Other logs might have other formats. I can show you quickly. Uh, Deckman, I guess, is more conventional. You've got a date with a European format and then another field for the time. So you can have date and time separated. Bravo, Faro logs have yet another format. In this case, they have date and time separate, but they appear as a number. They don't have the slashes, semicolon, uh, colon, or anything like that. In this case, if you had such a log, you would need to tell it whether the date and time is in separate columns or not, and then also specify what is the format. Click next. Uh, KND log cleaner uh, may it can be applied to logs that have GPS data or not. In our case, they do. And then we need to specify which column is the latitude and longitude specified in. In our case, it's pretty easy. It's in column three is latitude. So I'll click on lat and say selected. Click on lawn and click selected. But it also needs to know what is the format. Um, and there's two options usually for that. Either it's in degrees and decimals of degrees, or it's in degrees, minutes, and decimals of minutes. In our case, you will need to open your log. Expedition has the standard format that it's always in degrees, dot degrees. Select that, click next. Now we get to the fun part where it has looked up all the different labels it's found, and it lets you select which ones you would like to use or not. In Expedition, it's pretty common to have uh, some columns which just do not have data at all. As you can see, those columns like downhole, four stay length are in the log by default, but they just never take values. Boat speed is missing value in the beginning, but later on it gets filled in properly. So first of all, we can tell it that those columns 22 to 25, we don't want to use them. And in fact, they have been unselected by default. Now, all the other columns except those, we will want to use. So let me select those, except 22 to 25, COGSOG, we definitely want. Now, second step, 
is we need to give, give it a little bit of information about those columns. So you will have to understand what is inside your log. So uh, I'm not going to talk about both straight away, but that is very important for Expedition. I'll, t I'll talk about it in the next slide. But make sure it's selected. Make sure this, uh, the uh, decimals is zero and the number, uh, number type is number. Now, boat speed, we probably only need two decimals. Click two, and it's a number. Now, this type, you can adjust this. This is quite important to, that, to do that because the log cleaner has the ability to downsample, resample, uh, interpolate missing data. In order to do all these operations, it needs to know how can it average or interpolate numbers, and an angle 360 is not averaged or interpolated the same way as a, as a usual, as a standard um, mm -hmm. number. AWA stands for apparent wind angle. This is an angle 180. I'm happy with one decimal. Apparent wind speed, this is a number, probably go for just one decimal. True wind angle, one decimal. This is an angle 180. True wind speed, probably enough to have just one Decimal, true wind direction is not just a number, it's an angle 360. Set in drift for the current, angle 360 and a number with two decimals. Heading, that's an angle 360. Air temperature, probably just need one decimal. Sea temperature, one decimal. Barometer, depth, heel, we probably only need one decimal. And this is technically an angle 180, except your heel never goes to minus 180 or plus 180. So it's okay to say this is just a number. Same um, discussion for trim. Trim goes to one, and then it's a, you can say it's a number. And for forestay, this is for rudder, sorry. Same thing, one decimal is enough. And yes, it's an angle 180, but it's not, never gonna go around the clock. So happy to leave it as a number. Forestay will just have two decimals, and it's a number. And then towards the end, we have cog. Cog, one decimal. This is definitely an angle 360, course over ground. Speed over ground. You can leave two decimals and state as a number. Now, you've also got these checkboxes min and max. So this is interesting in the case that you are using the log cleaner for, down, for downsampling. You've been, you've been offshore for three days from, you've done long offshore and you've got a massive log file of, uh, at one hertz. So there's one line of data every second. And this is gonna be very difficult to process. In fact, it's, it's very difficult to open in Excel and uh, Ray Street, they will struggle with that. So you decided you wanted to downsample it to a log of every 10 seconds instead of, instead of one. Issue here is that if you have a variable called forest day, which is the tension of your forest day, and you're very interested in looking at the numbers at the peaks of this forest day, if you just downsample and average all the data over 10 seconds, you're gonna lose those peaks. Now, if instead you check the box max, this will create in the output log a value for forest day, which will be the 10 second average of the forest day, but it will also create a new variable called forest day max, which will be the one second peak over this 10 average, this 10 second average. And so the good news with that is you will not lose your peaks, uh, your high frequency peaks. Let's click on next and look at the final setting before you can run the log. Output frequency. Uh, in that case, we are. it was a one second log. We leave it a one second log. We just have done a little bit of things onto it, like uh, remove some variables. Uh, shift time by. This is, for instance, your log might be in UTC and you want to bring it back to local time because it's nicer to process. Offset GPS position. Um, in some cases, the GPS might be in the back of the boat, in the middle of the boat or somewhere else, and you want, it to, you want to tell it every time step that it needs to be shifted a little bit according to the heading so that you're offsetting, offsetting your, your GPS location, which can be interesting when you're doing really um, advanced um, investigation of pre-start and you want to know if you crossed the line early or not. Interpolate missing lines. So that's an interesting feature. Sometimes a log might not be very regular. It might come in at every second, but then sometimes skip one second, skip two seconds, come back to one second, just be irregular. Uh, this specifies to the log cleaner that you would like to interpolate whatever is missing. Now for the filter, this one is very important, especially so for um, expedition logs. If I go back to the log, the expedition log, you will see that the first column is called boat and has zero all the time. Well, in fact, it doesn't necessarily have zero all the time. 
What happens with Expedition is that if you have your AIS turned on and you configured Expedition to log AIS from other boats, you will have extra lines in this uh, log with a boat uh, value of one, and then you will have some AIS data. You must specify to the log cleaner to skip those lines. So this is where you should do it. Filter only process lines where, and then I'm gonna take my variable boat equals zero. And that way it will ignore any line of data where the first value for boat was anything else but zero. Then we have some output settings. Uh, you can say, I'm happy the way it was in the input, or you can say, in fact, so there's this UTC value, which is not very readable. Uh, in my log, I prefer to have something that looks more like what Deckman has with a uh, year and a date. So in the output, I can say, well, no, I would please put date and time in separate columns. The timestamp uh, label uh, so we want it as a default and we want the, the timestamp label so the date value to be called date and the time label to be called time. As for latitude longitude, I'm actually quite happy the way it is in the um, expedition log. And from there, I can clean on run log cleaning. Before I do that, let's show you one, one other little uh, tip here. At any time, once I've done all this configuring, it takes a bit of time initially. Well, you can save this to a config, and anytime you run the log cleaner again with a new log, you should load the config that you've already created and you don't need to go through this whole configuration process again. Right, let's click on run log cleaning. And there you go, it's asking me to save it. Expedition log, one second clean. I'm going to save that. And it's opened it here, so let's have a look at it in my um, notepad++, which is a type of notepad. Well, here we go. Here's our final result. We've got date and time as specified in the output. And then if I go further to the right, you will see that we now have two variables for force day. One is called force day and one is called force day max. That's it for this video. Uh, I hope it's uh, helped and will make your work easier. If you have any comments, please comment below or send us an email.